Have you ever seen this picture of Elvis? Looks like he's watching something, maybe just thinking to himself. What about this picture of him hanging out against a wall? It says eagle in the background. Well, on today's episode of Glow Trotting with Trey, you will learn about these photos and see where they were captured 60 years ago in Memphis, Tennessee. It's going to be a good episode. Get your popcorn ready. Stay tuned. This sign is in the private collection of a friend of ours, and I guarantee you there's a big possibility that Elvis saw this very sign that night when he played the Eagle's Nest, which was right here inside this building in Memphis, Tennessee. The building is still here all these years later. And guess what? Me and Spa Guy got inside. This would have been the back entrance. Could Elvis have come through this door? Could be likely. But what I do know is right here through this door is the famous Eagle's Nest where I can put Elvis, Scotty, and Bill in 1954 playing here over 14 times. This is no doubt the Eagle's Nest, friends. Elvis played right here. I'm going to show you a photo of that bar right there. And you're going to see that red pole in the photo. So yeah, look at that pole one more time because here it is all these years later that lines up that bar area of the Eagle's Nest now that was a later photo, but right here as I pan over, look at that back wall. Ronnie Smith told me that that is where the stage would have been when Elvis performed in here. He played in the Eagle's Nest as well and came out to shows. So Ronnie said it was in that very back corner. And there is the bar area of the Eagle's Nest. So the place, of course, is falling in, unfortunately. But this is definitely the building if the walls could talk they could share some great stories because i can put elvis in here playing over 14 times in 1954. there's advertisements in the paper there's stories and i'm going to read you one story because johnny cash was invited by elvis to come out to the eagle's nest to see him perform and this is what johnny cash said i remember elvis's show at the eagle's nest as if it were yesterday the date was a blunder because the place was an adult club where teenagers weren't welcome and so Vivian and I were two of the only a dozen or so patrons, 15 probably at the most. All the same, I thought Elvis was great. The thing I really noticed that night though was his guitar playing. Elvis was a fabulous rhythm player. He'd start into That's Alright Mama with his own guitar alone and you didn't want to hear anything else. I, I didn't anyway. I was disappointed when Scotty Moore and Bill Black jumped in and covered him up. Not that Scotty and Bill weren't perfect for him. The way he sounded with them that night was what I think of as Seminole Presley. The sound I missed through the, all the years after he became so popular and made records full of orchestration and overproduction. I love that clean, simple combination of Scotty, Bill, and Elvis with his acoustic guitar. You know, I, I've never heard or read anyone else praising Elvis as a rhythm guitar player. And after the Sundays, I never heard his own guitar on his records. So that's what Johnny Cash had to say about seeing Elvis out at the Eagle's Nest. One of the first shows, because El he said Elvis invited him there after the concert at Lamar Airways back in the back of that building. Cowboy Jack Clement was a singer and MC that played the Eagle's Nest during the time with Elvis. And he remembered that Elvis got paid $10 a night to sing during intermissions. On those nights when Elvis was to appear, my job at the end of one of our sets was to introduce Elvis. And Elvis would always tell me, just before my introduction, give me a big build-up, Jack. 
Clement went on to say, even when he wasn't singing, Elvis would hang out at the club. I got to know him fairly well. It's amazing how people went for him. A lot of people didn't understand what it was Elvis was doing, what it was that Elvis was doing. But when he was on stage, the jam, the dance floor, not... But when he was on stage, they jammed the dance floor, not to dance, but to stand there and watch him and clap. The people were totally sold on the guy. Elvis played his own rhythm. Some notes might change from one playing to another, but it seemed to work for him. I also remember seeing a video by uh, Elvis's Crown Electric boss, James uh, Tipler. He and his wife came out to the Eagle's Nest and supported Elvis at his shows, and they said they loved him. And James is quoted as saying, he wanted us to come out and see him so he would feel he had some friends in the audience. He had quite a bit of trouble with stage fright. So this is something else I found about Elvis at the Eagle's Nest. It says, just one week after Overton Park, they started playing as the intermission act out at the Eagle's Nest on their own. It wasn't too long before the intermission shows at the Eagle's Nest become a kind of underground sensation. It was Sleepy Eye John who booked a club and Sleepy Eye John whose band continued to play the main dance sets. But from the start, Elvis was clearly an attraction. Elvis Presley tonight, the little newspaper squib announced. See and hear Elvis sing and that's all right and Blue Moon of Kentucky. Mission, $1.20. Sometimes it was ladies night too, ladies for 50 cents. At the Eagle's Nest, Elvis seemed to gain more and more of a sense of himself, greater and greater self-assurance on stage and off. His movement was a natural thing, said Scotty Moore, but he was also very conscious of what got a reaction. He'd do something one time, and then he would expand on it real quick. According to Reggie Young, who was 17 at the time and would join Eddie Bunn's band, The Stumpers, the following year, all the teenagers who were out at the swimming pool that gave the clear pool complex its name, the Eagle's Nest was over the changing room, would rush in as soon as they heard Elvis, Scotty, and Bill start to play. Then all the kids went back outside when Sleepy High John's band took the stage again 15 minutes later. Elvis would come on and do the floor show, just the three of them. He seemed to be handling it all very well, you know, in a young gentleman fashion. So listen to this story by Jack Clement. He said, I was going with my fiance Doris. We got married in December, and Doris would come to the dance and sit at a table. And when I was up there singing, Elvis would be over there trying to get Doris to go out with him. <laughs> Doris was a very pretty girl. I didn't mind if he flirted with Doris. I liked him. I would get up there and do my set, and then I'd bring him on, and he would really cut up. So those are just a few stories from Elvis's time inside this very building. I mean, let's imagine everything I just read to you guys took place in this room. It's hard to it's hard to really fathom that, but all these years goes by, and when you don't take care of something, this is what happens to even the best of things. But I think I mentioned that Elvis performed here 14 dates that I know of. Uh, all through 1954. He's performing here when they signed with Louisiana Hayride. So I believe they would perform here and then get in a car and go to Shreveport for the Hayride there at the end of the week. So, I mean, Elvis was playing here and then he was jumping in a car and going to Arkansas, to, to Louisiana, to Alabama, and coming back to Memphis and playing his club, this club, the Eagle's Nest. I found Nest. this at the Eagle's Nest. Is it Elvis? It's just on the ground. It's kind of eerie if it is. Here's Elvis out front of the Eagle's Nest. You can see the brick. Pay attention to the brick there on the wall. Could it have been right here? Check the brick out. The Eagle's Nest was over here in this building. Can't tell you positively, but it's the same brick. It was here somewhere. So that picture of Elvis standing up against the wall, guess who it was captured by? It was captured by Elvis's aunt Lillian, Gladys Smith's sister. She took those portraits uh, one night when they came out and saw him perform here with uh, Gladys and Vernon. I learned that in, um, in the Last Train to Memphis book. So that's a pretty cool little interesting tidbit about those photos. So Elvis's aunt, family member, captured Elvis for us to try to figure out where in the world this picture could have been. And it could have been right against these bricks there in Memphis, Tennessee. They look similar.
get your tickets and then walk through the door to the left of this door because it looks like the left of this door they filled it in with brown bricks you see that right there so it looks like to me that there would have been a door here and then later they open it up and made the door wider probably ada or something of that nature mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying yeah. so that was that would have been 80s so i went back through there's a staircase that goes on the back side of where the stage is now in there and goes down and it goes down into this room i'm going to show you a picture of it but the only entrance point to that is down here but i'm also going to show you that i speculated that the the sign could have been here the eagle's nest but that does not go there's no way to get to the eagle's nest through that door easily so that's not a place where you could go through that door that's not an entry point for the eagle's nest the entry point was either where i just showed you or you could have come through this club and the entry point would have been right here and that's the club that was kind of set up like um it was real fancy you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah. It's a real fancy club. This would have been the entry door. And, of course, the pool would have been here. So they couldn't have an entry door on the side. So you would have parked over in here. But to get to the downstairs club, you would have gone here. To get to the upstairs club, you would have gone there. To get to the... And probably to go to the pool, you would have gone there. To get to the other club, the Eagle's Nest, which is... You can see it's kind of tucked over alone, sticking out over there. It would have been right there. So... We don't know it all, but we know a little bit more about it. I can safely say that we just went into the eagle's nest. Yeah, we were there, and we spent some time trying to unravel it. and yeah, Over an hour. Yeah, couldn't unravel it as far as exactly where he was sitting. There was some clues, but guys, in 64 years, it changes so much. There's just, sometimes you just can't. But most importantly, that was the eagle's nest, and we'll leave it up to your imagination because I, I kind of lined up that picture for you. So could it be? Could it not? Yeah. Elvis was in that room. No doubt about and that. And that's all right, Mama. Blue Moon of Kentucky. Yeah, he was playing the hits. He I, was excited. Because his, his career was just starting. Mm -hmm. And you know that, man. He was like, wow, I'm really singing. I'm really, People are, are cheering for me there. Mm -hmm. They're excited to hear me. I mean, you know, what was his, what was his life? Every day was changing. It was. Quickly. And then they would be here, and then they'd be in Alabama, or they'd be in Arkansas, or they'd be in Texas. And then it's here, and then he signs with the, the um, Shreveport. Yeah. Yeah, well, I th he so, played here after he was already with. Um, so the, he would come back and play here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah the, the Hayride, Louisiana Yeah, Hayride. he played here many times. Yeah, and the pool was right there. And I wish it was still there because I am hot and would like to go swimming. Me too. Check out this picture of the swimming pool at Clear Pool here in Memphis, Tennessee, where the Eagle's Nest is, where the spa guy and I was just driving over. He mentioned that to you. That pool, guys, was right here where I'm filming at. That's pretty much about the same um, lineup of that picture. And in the far distance here in a minute, I'm going to show you a house that you can see in that photo that helped me line it up. This house right now that I'm zooming in across the highway for you is in the picture. So one last thing. Here's that picture of Elvis once again where he's sitting in the chair and looks like he's watching someone, maybe someone on stage or someone's talking or he's just really in the moment thinking i um i tried to line this up that day that we filmed inside the eagle's nest and i thought i saw something in the distance but it's, it's nothing in there it can be lined up today it's just all in disarray as you as you can tell but this is what i did find and i'm gonna leave it up to y'all see what you think if i'm right elvis was sitting right here Check there at that out right there on the wall. See the square? I'm going to zoom in for you. I think that's where the mirror was. So that, if I'm right, places Elvis right here in 1954. What do you guys think? We definitely know this was the eagle's nest. It's still here. It's abandoned, as you can see, so I do not recommend you coming in here. But Elvis was right here, once upon a time in his life.
66 years ago. Hope you've enjoyed this episode of Glow Trotting with Trey. Please, if you have, give me a like on this video and don't double dribble. Subscribe if you haven't already to Glow Trotting with Trey to stay updated with every new episode that I upload each Tuesday on Elvis and special ones here and there. Me and the spa guy, we took care of business and got in the eagle's nest. Until next time, I'll see you down the road.